Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're focusing on Cambridge IGCC mathematics and the topic of number and the subtopic number theory. So today we're going to be looking at what are the different types of numbers in mathematics. So you must be thinking, what is she talking about? There's only a specific set of numbers that we have. Well, actually numbers are numbers, yes, but we have different groups of numbers like natural, integers, prime, square. So those are what we are going to look at today in detail. Just to start off, we're going to look at natural numbers. This is probably one of the earliest type of numbers that you would have come across in math. When you were a toddler, your parents would have asked you to count from one. And that's exactly what these are. We call them counting numbers. So we start from one, two, three, four, five, and they do include zero. So that's an important thing you have to remember. And we often denote natural numbers with an N and you would see that there's a double line going in the middle like that. Moving on to integers. So integers are basically natural numbers plus negative whole numbers. So you add on the negative side, right? So we do have zero, we have the counting numbers in the positive side, but we also have the counting numbers in the negative side. And that is basically integers. So we call them um, integers as a whole. If they're negative, we call them negative integers and positive if they're positive integers. And in terms of notation, we often use the Z symbol like that for integers. Moving on, we have prime numbers. Now, prime numbers are basically numbers which can only be um, found by multiplying the number and one. So, for example, if you want um, two, two is considered a prime number. Why? Because the only way to get two is one times two. The same way, if you take three, three is also considered a prime number. Why? Because the only way you can get three is multiplying one by three. But four is not considered a prime number because there are two different ways in which you can get four. One times four is one way and two times two is also four. So hence, prime numbers are basically numbers which only can be uh, found by multiplying the number and one itself. So some special interesting facts about prime numbers is the fact that two is the only even prime number that we have and that all the prime numbers we talk about are positive. And the important thing to remember is one is not a prime number, even though the only way you can get one is one by one, right? Um, so please remember that that's a very important fact. So moving on to square numbers. Now square numbers are basically numbers that you can get when you multiply two numbers by itself. So for example, um, if you have two, two times two, or we say two squared is four. So four is considered a square number. Three times three is three squared, which is nine. So nine is considered a square number. So similarly, 16 is also considered a square number. And in general, any square number can be written as n squared because it is basically the number times itself, n times n. If you want to enter the power into your calculator, um, you can use this diagram for reference just to see how you can put in the power 2 in your scientific calculators. Moving on to cube numbers, cube numbers and square numbers are very um, similar, just that the square number is basically the number multiplied by itself once and the cube number is the number multiplied by itself twice. So here, we are not only multiplying 2 times 2, but we're multiplying 2 times 2 times 2, which is equivalent of 2 cubed, that is 8. And same way, we have 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 cubed, which is 27. So 8 is a cube number, 27 is a cube number, so is 64. Again, in general, you can write any cube number as n cubed, which is n times n times n some help and guidance in how to put in the power 3 in your scientific calculators, please feel free to refer to this diagram. Moving on, triangular numbers are basically numbers which 
um, well, we follow a triangular pattern. That's why we call them triangular numbers. So basically the first triangular number is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So the second triangular number is 3. And then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So the third triangular number is 6 and so on as it follows the pattern. In general, we can find triangular numbers using n times n plus 1 over 2 as a formula. So for example, if I wanted to find out the seventh um, triangular number, it's a matter of substituting 7 in there. So 7 times 8, 56, 56 divided by 2, so 28 would be the seventh triangular number. Finally, we come into the two very most important types of numbers that we have, rational and irrational. Rational numbers are often denoted with the Q, while irrational numbers would be denoted with the same Q with a small apostrophe on the side. So rational numbers are basically numbers that you can put into a fraction form. So if you have a number that can be put into fraction form, then automatically it's rational. Okay? So of course that means any number that is a fraction is automatically a rational number. Also, if you have um, a finite decimal, that is a decimal that ends without repeating. So, for example, 1.875, right? It stops, the decimal ends. Those sort of numbers can also be written in some fraction form. Hence, they're always considered rational. So are recurring decimals, because recurring decimals such as one-third, which is 0 0.333, or two-thirds, which is 0 0.666, are also in fraction form. And if you can take square root of square numbers, so remember 9, 16, these were all square numbers we looked at earlier. So square root of a square number is often going to be an integer. So square root of 9 is 3. So hence, 3 being an integer can be written as 3 over 1 in fraction form. And that's the reason any integer is also a rational number because it can be put over one, right? And finally, moving on to irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are basically everything that is not rational. So for example, it could be an infinite decimal, so a decimal that doesn't end and goes on forever. And it could be thirds. So you can see these are thirds which don't involve perfect square numbers. So for example, square root 2, square root 3, they would be giving us decimal outputs which are continuous. So hence, they are also part of irrational numbers. And of course, the most famous one is Mr. Pi, the famous symbol. And that brings us to the end of lesson number one, topic one. Alrighty, so we're going to finish off with a bunch of uh, questions um, and the first one is write the natural number from the given list of numbers. So as we know, natural numbers are basically positive numbers and they're whole numbers. So when we look at this list, negative 8 is a negative number, so that's out. 3.5 and 4 over 5 are both um, what we say as uh, fractional numbers or decimals, so that's also out. So 452 is the answer for this one. Moving on, we're looking at how many integers are there in between square root of 28 and square root of 80. So think about the closest perfect square. So square root of 36 is 6, and the closest um, square root coming from the other end is square root of 64, which is 8. So if we think about it, we have 6, we will have 7 in between, and we'll have 8. So therefore, we have 3 integers in between um, this range given to us here. Which of the following is both a square number and a cube number? Alrighty. So um, 36 we can write as 6 times 6. Uh, 16 can be written as 4 times 4. 100 can be written as two times two, um, 10 times 10, and 64 can be written as 8 times 8. So when we look at it, only 64 can also be written as 4 times 4 times 4. So therefore, 64 is the answer for this one. Again, another one about integers. Okay, so we have square root of 25 this time which is equal to um, 5, and 
the closest to square root of 90 would be square root of 81, which is basically 9. So we're looking at 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So therefore, that's 5 integers in between in this range. Which of the following is a two-digit cubic number? So we listed down the first few cubic numbers when we were doing the slides. So 1 is a cubic number followed by 8 and then 27, which is 3 cubed. So therefore, 27 is the answer here. And that brings us to the end of our little quiz. I hope you really enjoyed lesson number one and that I'm looking forward to catching you all with lesson number two.